There are some libraries in Python that you'll always import, whether it's a small project that you're working on or a large project. And not all these libraries are complex to understand, but DateTime might be one of the libraries that maybe sometimes it's confusing to understand how it works. And in this short video, we will ensure that you will know everything about the DateTime library. We will simply explain important methods and how to use it for performing complex date and time calculations. So let's understand how DateTime could be used in your Python project. So here are two ways that you might see in Python projects how the DateTime library is imported. There is the way to import the sub-library, which is called also DateTime, or you can import directly the DateTime library itself. So we will use the first approach, and we will see one of the golden methods of the DateTime library, which is called now. And obviously, we can understand from the name of the method that it retrieves the current date and the time. So this is actually an object, a DateTime object, that is going to be very interesting to look at. If we go ahead and print this object, then let's see how it looks like. So we will bring our terminal here and we will use python run.py and you can see that we receive year, month, day in the month and also the current time. Now we might be interested in a specific piece of information from this output. So there are multiple read-only attributes or methods that we can access when we have an object like this on our hand. So if we use Ctrl D for duplicating a line and we use something like year, this is a property that we can see. Or if we say weekday, which is a method, let's see the results now. So again, bring our terminal back and we will clear everything and we will run this project again. So we can see that we see the year and we also see zero for weekday. Now by the time that I record this video, today is Monday. So if that is the first day of the week, then it will just print me zero. But if I was to record this video, say at Sunday, since this is the last day of the week, then we would receive here six. So these are some of the nice attributes and methods that we have in the daytime library. Now, if we clean these two lines and we duplicate this line again, then it is a great idea to show the better approach, in my opinion, to access specific pieces of information in a daytime object. So another approach that you might see in Python projects is using the F string here. So if we use an F string and we print the current, then you might see a colon and then multiple ways to format a specific piece of information from your date time, meaning basically cut the information from the received output. So say that we want to print Monday, all right? So we would go ahead and format this with the percentage sign and capital A like that, all right? So if we bring the terminal and print this, then you can see that we receive Monday. Now at this stage, you might ask yourself how I'm going to memorize all the available formats. Well, I actually prepared a nice table that you can take a look in my code snippets repository and it is also available right here. So this is the code snippets repository in my GitHub that you can go ahead and clone and you can visit this directory, which is called daytime Python. And if you go ahead and run Python print all formats, this is a script that I prepared that prints them all, then you will see all the available formats. Well, let's actually run this again. And you can see that the first row here is the current date and time again. You can see that this table describes the description, the format and the result, what you will receive back. And here is our capital A that we showed earlier on, which prints Monday. And just take a look how many options you have, all right? The lowercase b prints the month short version, which is April APR for shorter version of it. And there are a bunch of options how we can format and play with your daytime object to have the display that you desire to have when you play with your daytime objects. So again, available in my GitHub repo, which could be helpful for you. All right, so now that we got the idea of formats, 
it's a good idea to know how you can create your own daytime objects as well because let's say that you'd like to develop a program that is just a counter for the next year's event meaning the 1st January of 2025 then it means that you have to create your own daytime object in order to start calculating say how many days left for the next new year's event all right so that is achievable by creating a custom daytime object which then you have to provide the necessary information, the month, the day of the month and the year, and you'll have a daytime object to play with. So if we create a variable that is called New Year's, okay, just made this variable name up, and we assign this to daytime, then we could simply go ahead and create an object like we create object of a class, because behind the scenes, this is like a class that you can instantiate. And we could provide here some values like year 2025, month 1, and then day 1 like this. Now, it is intentional that I don't pass hours, minutes, and seconds to be exactly 12 a.m. Because these are the default values. So this is okay. And if we go ahead and print the new years, let's clean everything from here. Then you can see that I receive a daytime object with the default time, like I told you, 12 a.m. So let's see how we could write a program to develop how many days left for the New Year's Eve. So we can go and say, very simple, difference, a new variable, and we could simply take the New Year's object, which is a daytime object, and subtract with the current, which is also a daytime object. Now, we know that this is a daytime object and so is this but what will be the kind of an object that is retrieved from subtracting two daytime objects well daytime behaves in a way that it returns a new object here that is called time delta and if you know from physics class or math classes delta stands for difference all right so this is why it is named time delta and we will see what this object is capable of in just a bit so if we go ahead and print the diff and run our program then you can see that we receive a result that says 253 days and seven hours or eight hours or so so this is a way that we can subtract two daytime objects and you can see how pretty the result is when you subtract now of course you can customize your time delta objects as well if you go and use dot days then you'll only receive the days or total seconds you will receive how many seconds left for the new year's eve of course that is a large number but the total seconds method is very valuable when you like to know how many seconds running a python function takes and we will do that in just a bit now it's also mentioning one more important thing about the time delta object you can of course create your own time deltas because maybe in a case that you'd always like to print one hour in advance what the hour will be from the current time. So a way that we can do this, let's clean everything here and I will be changing to the second approach now, import daytime and I will capture the current time with the now method and say that I'd like to print one hour in advance from now. Okay, so I will say one hour diff is equal to daytime dot time delta. All right, so we are creating a time delta object, which will be an indication for always plus one hour from any daytime object you'll give to it. All right, so I will just say hours equals to one. So right after we have done this, then I can go ahead and say print the hour in one hour the time excuse me the time in one hour will be and i can just go here or in a new print line whatever you decide or inside curly bracket with an if string and i can say current plus one hour diff like that so it is also okay taking daytime objects and adding them time delta objects all right so if we run our program again then you can see that it says the time in one hour will be well we have the year and month and the day of the month but again the point is to see that okay and the current time is actually 1622 all right and of course this will work in the opposite way if we were to say the time was an hour ago and we will subtract 
and we will bring our terminal again then of course you can do that as well all right so we said that we will show how you can also capture how many seconds a function took to execute in python now see how i imported the time library to sleep here five seconds when i have the long function here so just simulating a function that takes five seconds to execute and i'm going to bring in these five lines outside of my function all right i'm going to go ahead and say hey capture the current time right now execute the function and then capture the time again and then do a time calculation like we did earlier with the new year's event example and finally we go ahead with a print line that says the function took and then inside the curly brackets notice how this is an f string i say print the total seconds all right this is a very useful method like i said earlier on and then i just print a nice sentence here if we go back to our terminal and we run this program then of course it is going to hold on for five seconds and then it is going to say this fun the function took five seconds to execute now at this point you might ask yourself well i might have 20 25 100 functions on my project so i'm not going to repeat this process for each of my functions and the solution for that one of the solutions for that to be more accurate could be decorating your functions with a decorator like the following of course i made this name up but for each one of your functions you can go ahead and decorate them with another function that you have on your hand which calculates the time difference and i do have a tutorial on that i do have a tutorial that explains how you can write your own decorators and one of the examples there is writing a decorator that will help you to calculate how many seconds your functions are taking to execute so i deeply recommend watching this video as well so if you enjoyed in here then consider hitting the like button it will help this channel a lot and also share in the comment section if you took something new from this video and see you around in my next uploads